O Lord, hear my voice, for I have called to you. Be my help. Do not abandon or forsake me, O God, my Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you as first. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Lord Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, and sisters that I have greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts and in my words, words in what, what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my, fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, Mary the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, sisters to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, peace to people, people of goodwill. Good we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, Grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches tear off a tender shoot and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall, it shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name most high, to proclaim your kindness at dawn and your faithfulness throughout the night. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. The just one shall flourish like the palm tree, like a cedar of Lebanon shall he grow. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. They shall bear fruit even in old age. Vigorous and sturdy shall they be, declaring how just is the Lord, my rock, in whom there is no wrong. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense, according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The seed is the word of God. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compel the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that when it is sown in the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them. But to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. We walk by faith, not by sight. These are the words of St. Paul in the second reading, telling us how much we work. It is not by sight, but by faith that we work. While going through the readings of today, I remember a story of a man who planted his corn in a field. And he was so curious that he wanted to know how this corn is doing, how it is growing, because he has not been able to understand how he can plant corn and the next day he comes and see it like already blossoming. So he wanted to know how corn is growing, how that growth takes place. He lit a torchlight and went went out to the field at night. He took his bread, went and was lying in the field, watching closely to the corn to see how it grows, like how it removes one leaf to the other until he will ever make plants. But unfortunately for him, his eyes began to fail. 
he could not support his eyes to keep them open to see. And throughout that was happening, at one point, he just so surrendered. He couldn't see and he couldn't understand. And it dawned unto him that everything that happened, happened just according to the will of God. All he needed to do was to plant the, the, the seed and allow it to grow. He did not need to know how it is growing. And in the gospel today, we meet a contrary of what is happening of this story. Jesus Christ tells us about the kingdom of God, which is like a seed that a man scattered and went to bed. Instead of going to the farm to sit and watch how it grows, he goes to bed because he has this hope and trust in the Lord that he will make those the seed to grow and to blossom and to bear fruits. Certainly enough, one thing that helps for this seed to grow is one, the human action, and two, the divine action. Man needs to sow the seed, and when he sows the seed, in order to help this seed to bear much fruits, to grow and to bear much fruits, so that people can eat from it, he needs to do the part of moisturing the soil. He needs to put manure. He needs to water the plants. He needs to do other things pertaining that can help to produce food and provide food for that seed that he planted so that the seed can grow. But it is good to understand that after all these things that he is doing, he is not doing anything directly to that plant. It is left of its own accord that that plant is able to grow. And that is why uh, Jesus Christ says, of its own accord, the land bears fruit. And that its own accord is now the power of God that is acting in the seed, that is helping that plant to grow. Connecting this with our own lives, we discover or we come to understand that our lives doesn't only depend on us. We have our own part to play and God has his to do. We have our own parts to play, maybe physically and spiritually, but when we plant our own seed by our own lives, God will help it grow. We do not need to see how it is growing, but God, needs to, God is the one who gives the power and makes it grow. St. Paul says in the second reading, we all aspire to please God. But how do we aspire to please God? First, by planting our own seed. And that seed is the seed of faith. We plant our own seed of faith during our time of baptism. When we come and profess our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are baptized into his own human body, into his own divine body, that is when we, when we plant our own seed. And it is through our own activities on earth that helps us to moisturize the soil. The soil is the soil of our soul. When we do good works, we carry out corporal works of mercy, we come to church, we pray every day, we do other things that pertain to our spiritual life, that is the way we water our land, we water the soul. That is the way we moisture the soul, that is the way we manure the soul. And because of that, the seeds of faith, no matter how little it is, God helps it to grow. And at the end of it all, we are declared holy people because, of we, did, because we did our part and God eventually helps that seed to grow. Dear brothers and sisters, Today we celebrate the feast, or we celebrate Father's Day. And what is it about Father's Day that we do celebrate? Apart from the fact that we go back to look at what the gospel is telling us about the seed. Can you believe with me and imagine with me how awesome God is that the seed that he planted in a woman's womb just as an embryo is the same seed that we celebrate today, calling Father's Day. We see fathers sitting, seated among us today. These are people who originated just as tot toddlers. They were as small as anything in the hands of a woman, but now they are called fathers. 
that is a seed that God planted in the womb of a woman, and now that seed has blossomed, and now we bear, we, we reap from the fruit of that seed. And so, dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate Father's Day, it, it is also good that we think about two things about fathers. The first thing is the good things that fathers have been doing to us. The father has been of support to a family. The father has been there to protect the family, and the father is there to show an example to the family. And so, in most days of our life, sometimes we do not acknowledge all these beautiful and good things that fathers do to us. Why? Because human beings, we demand a lot. We ask a lot. And so we expect a lot from fathers. Because of that expectation that we, we have for our fathers, sometimes we tend not to see the good that they do. And we only see the evil things that they do because they do not support us, because they do not give all our demands. Sometimes we do not appreciate them. As we join to celebrate Father's Day today, it is a time for us to appreciate our fathers for all the good things that they have been doing to us. Even those things that they did without our being able to see them, it is time for us to appreciate it and to pray, to thank God for their lives and to pray for them and even maybe to take them out, give them something that is good, something beautiful, maybe give them flowers so that they also are encouraged to continue to do these good things. The second thing about fathers is now on the father's part. Sometimes when we praise people, it's not for them to feel that they are already big and like, uh, I am up there, no. It is for you to do more. When, they, when your children or maybe your wives praise you today and recognize your goodness as father, you also need to go back within yourself and examine yourself and see how much good I have been to my family, how much example, how, what example I have been able to show my family. And if you have been doing something as little as a mustard seed, try to water it so that God can make it to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Be an example to your, father, to your family. And so, dear brothers and sisters, it is good that in everything we do, we should always recognize God as our primary father. So as we celebrate Father's Day today, we should also know that God is the only father that we have, the only spiritual father, and the only father that brought all humanity into existence. And that is why we should join the psalmist today to give thanks to the Lord for the goodness he has been doing to us, both to our biological fathers, both to our own, father, to, to our own uh, spiritual fathers, maybe godfathers, and to our own fathers who guide us like the priest. Let us thank God for the gift of fatherhood. And in everything we do, let us remember that we walk by faith, not by sight. Let me ask fathers to stand for our Father's Day blessing. Let us pray. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers, that the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us stand for the profession of our faith. I believe in one God, the Father almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we now make our prayer for our community and for the world, let us pray, let us all pray to Christ the Lord, not only for ourselves and our own needs, but for the entire people. For all of our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Berbich, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice and peace among nations, especially Ukraine and the Middle East, and for those who serve in our law enforcement military, diplomatic and intelligence services to make peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith. And for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Israelite hostages and all the innocent victims of war, terrorism, and violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our young people graduating from high school, that the Holy Spirit will guide them to make good decisions for their future, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all fathers that look into the example of Saint Joseph and relying on his prayers, they will be holy men, holy husbands, and holy fathers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who gave his life for us and for our parish seminarians, Gabriel Gode, Michael Gibbons, John Anthony Bono, and Andrew Garcia, and for Sister Monica Baptiste Wellen and Sister Abigail Therese Jones, novices for the Dominican Sisters in Nashville, and Joanna Shaw, postulants for the Carmelites in Port Tobacco, Maryland. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound, especially Father Pinozotto, Alice Paxton, and John Tui, and for our deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those remembered in the Father's Day Novena, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal intentions, which we offer in the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Incline your merciful ear to our prayers, we ask, O Lord, and listen in kindness to the supplications of those who call on you, through Christ our Lord. The second collection is for our parish construction debt. 
Thank you for your generosity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed are the God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of this name, for our good and the Lord's the Church. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, Grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them out to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. This is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. 
in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. By your cross, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, 
fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, only this do I seek, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life.
Announcements today, our poor box collection this weekend is for the poor Claire's, a cloistered community of sisters in Alexandria that rely upon others for their livelihood. This Sunday marks Father's Day, and so a novena of masses is being offered for all fathers, both living and deceased. If you'd like to have your father remembered, please complete the envelope available at the entrance tables and return it in the collection baskets or else to the office. It's a wonderful way to remember our fathers. And this Sunday, at, uh, all are invited after the 11 Mass for a farewell reception in the parish hall for Father Pinizzato. Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your Church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>